Adam Paul Basolka, Ivy Masters Learning Center at ivymasters.com. And today we're going to look at the 10th question from the Digital SAT Test 1 Module 2. It's from the Google Cap, the harder set of math questions. Number 10 reads, a business owner plans to purchase the same model of chair for each of 81 employees. The total budget to spend on these chairs is $14,000, which includes a 7% sales tax. Which of the following is closest to the maximum possible price per chair before sales tax the business owner could pay based on this budget? So honestly, the algebraic solution is easier here, but there's something that you probably don't know. Um, after this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my answer choices because that's a great alternative to students who don't know, but just know this thing that I'm gonna show you, which is, if you take 7% of something, you multiply by 1.07, and then you'd have to add it to something in order to increase that thing, but to do it all in one shot, which is really how you need to do this question, you multiply by 1.07. So if it was a 70% increase, you multiply by 1.7, 1.70, it's the same thing. But anyway, if you were to think of exactly what's going on here, the $14,000 includes a 7% sales tax. So 1.07 times some number equals 14,000. And so then when I divide by 1.07, I'm gonna get how much each of those chairs costs. Not, not each of those chairs cost. What the total cost is spent before tax. So we pull up our Desmos calculator and all we do is 14, thousand divided by 1.07 and we get thirteen thousand eighty four dollars and eleven cents so let's take that so now we've got thirteen thousand eighty four dollars and eleven cents now that's a total cost of the chairs before taxes we've got 81 chairs so we're gonna divide by 81 in order to get our answer so let's go back to our Desmos and we just divide um, 81. So 13084.11 on the bottom, we've got an 81. And we've got $161.53. Okay, so um, you can see that the answer here is B, but let's say you don't know how to do that. There's an approach that you should always ask yourself. If you look at our question and you're like, crap, I don't know what to do. Then what you could ask yourself is, could I pick numbers? Could I use my answer choices? Now let's say you're testing out answer choice C. What you do is you do 172.84. By the way, when you're using your answer choices, always start with the middle answer. And then you'd multiply it by 81. And let's see what we get, 172.84. So, 172.84 and that's going to be times I'm going to put my calculator down below over here times 81 and we get $14,000.04 now that's the answer choice for the student who forgets about the taxes don't forget about the taxes so um, we need to add 7% tax on top of that, so that's already too much money. So C and D are gone for that reason. And then notice, if we test it out, answer choice B, 161.83. Uh, right, and then 161.83. And then if we take that and we multiply that by 81, and then you get that number. Now... Even if you weren't sure that 1.07 thing, I could just straight multiply this by 1.07 and get my answer. But if, even if you weren't sure of that, then I could take this, 13,108.23. I could multiply it by 0.07. And then I could take that those results and add them. So 13,108. 0.23 and then I'm adding 917.58 it's close to 58 and I get 14,025 
0.81, um, you would see that if you were to test out answer choice A, it's going to be too small. So the correct answer here is B. Thank you for joining us today. If you like this video, click like. You can share it with someone who has difficulty with these types of questions. You got to kind of back solve it a little bit. Is there any question you'd like to see answered from any official PSAT or SAT or ACT? Leave that in the comments. I'd be happy to shoot a video on it. Click subscribe so you don't miss anything and check out that one minute video on TikTok. Have a great day.